From the moment we heard about Unknown 9 Awakening and how Kim Belair, the CEO of Sweet Baby Inc. was behind making this and she was the story architect of the Unknown 9 world, I had a lot of concerns and many of them were justified. Not because the game looked like garbage but because it felt like already just from watching the trailers that it was trying to be an injected DEI mess of a slop of a game that always seems to come out of Sweet Baby Inc. What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of Smash JT. So I made a couple videos talking about Unknown 9 Awakening. I covered the launch and I talked about how paltry the numbers were on the Steam database showing on launch day they couldn't even crack 200 people and then the following day they couldn't even crack 300 people. Even though this game was being given away for free with everyone who bought new graphics cards, people couldn't even bring themselves to playing the game and it was free. Like, it was so embarrassingly bad that it has to make you wonder, how did this even come to be in the first place? And so after I made those videos, someone reached out to me at my website and they asked me if they could share some private information with me. I was like, yeah, sure. They go, okay, you can share this with your audience, but I would like to be kept anonymous. I work at GameStop and I have some information about the sales of this game. And what I tell you is going to blow your mind. Smash JT. Hit that subscribe, give me a like, and check out SmashJT.com for the full article breaking down this anonymous email that I received from someone who is supposedly a corporate level executive at GameStop. And before I even dive too far into the email, I want to be absolutely clear. This is going to be treated as a rumor because I have not been able to personally verify this person's information nor have I found out any information about them but I felt compelled to share it with you guys because of just how eye-opening it was if it's true because at this point if it is true it's nothing short of catastrophic so the email went off like this from anonymous I work at GameStop at the corporate level I have data on 2900 stores your video inspired me to check Unknown 9 sales. While there was movement for 2,000 initial copies, which were store distributions, I saw maybe 50 other copies with movement, which were pre-orders, but nothing else. We had around 350 copies of Unknown 9 for PlayStation 5 available for shipping, but the demand was zero, meaning none sold. On Xbox, we had about 150 copies, and again, zero demand. So between both platforms at the time of my first email, we sold zero copies. And that first email was about four days from when he emailed me initially and then when he sent this follow-up. The initial email is just asking, hey, if I share this, can you keep my information private? Because I don't want to get in trouble. I just, I just want to let you know that the video you made kind of hit me, got me searching and wondering what's going on with this game and what they found was insane. Let's break it down because holy crap, according to this source that wants to remain anonymous, GameStop distributed 2,000 copies of Unknown 9 Awakening to their stores as part of their standard procedure for any game at launch. But outside of the 50 total pre-orders, no additional copies were sold. Zero. That means that despite being available in 2,900 stores, the game did not move off the shelves at all, like ever. Nobody anywhere walked into a GameStop, picked up this game, walked to the register, and purchased it. Nobody. The sheer scale of this failure is beyond massive when you consider just how rare it is for a game to generate almost zero post-launch sales at retail. And then it goes on talking about the online orders and GameStop had roughly 500 units across both platforms for PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and S available for shipping from the website with absolutely no demand there either. So zero copies sold online and zero copies sold in store. If this is to be believed, again, I'm stressing it's just a rumor because I have not verified it, but holy crap. It passes the smell test for how it came across to me and I was like, okay, I'll give this at least the time of day. It'll be a fun video to talk about it. But if this really is the case, holy crap. Retail stores serve as one of the most important early indicators for a game's potential success. A game that fails to perform at GameStop, a chain that's literally catering to 
gamers that want to buy physical games is already in trouble from Jump Street. Typically, the majority of a game's sales come during the launch window, with pre-orders making up a significant portion of the sales. Once the game's out, the momentum from in-store displays, customer views, word of mouth, typically help drive additional sales. But in this case, it looks like there's none of that outside of the 50 total pre-orders nationwide with GameStop, or at least the stores that are under this person's control that they can see, zero people purchased the game. The Steam numbers tell a very similar story. Looking at them right now as of recording this video, there are 121 people in the game playing it. And there was a total of 147 in the 24 hour peak and an all time peak of just 285 people total playing this game at once on Steam since launch four days ago. This is where I typically say this is one of the biggest flops in gaming history, but it doesn't even hold a candle to a game like Concord. The reviews on Steam aren't any kinder. Square Q wrote, an outdated game, extremely boring, weak combat, cutscenes not adjusted for 3440 by 1440 resolution. I could have gotten a solid game from AMD instead of this dud. Ray Link said, Got this game for free, and I still feel I got scammed. Trace Devil said, I got this game for free, and I want a refund of the time I wasted on it. Graphics are garbage. Combat is mediocre. Main character stares directly into your soul with no emotion in her eyes. There isn't much redeeming about this game. Don't waste your time or money on it. And Notorious D4C said, the fact that the plurality of reviews are free from an AMD CPU purchase should tell you all you need to know if this is worth the purchase. And the reviews go on and on and on. There's so many negative reviews on Steam right now about it, and many of them are people that receive the game for free. This is one of those wild situations that literally giving the game away still couldn't save it. And if anything, it actually could have hurt it because there's more people online giving negative reviews telling people not to buy it and they got it for free. A key reason why the failure of Unknown 9 Awakening is as bad as it is lies directly with its origins at Sweet Baby Inc. Headed by CEO Kim Belair, known for injecting DEI in everything she touches, Belair has built Sweet Baby Inc. to be having a reputation for prioritizing messaging over actual fun gameplay. Sweet Baby Inc. is the consultancy firm that always positions itself as the champion of representation in gaming, but their involvement has consistently led to projects that never seem to resonate with any of the actual gamers playing the games. And that's like a oil and water type mix right there. You can't have a game that's full of representation and try to sell it to gamers that don't give a crap about representation in games. Sweet Baby Inc's influence isn't just with the DEI though, it's the fact that the efforts with them always seem to come across feeling so forced. It makes us feel like we're being lectured to rather than entertained. In an industry where players are looking for immense worlds and engaging stories, overt political messaging alienates the very audience they are trying to garner. And it's gonna make you wonder, Kim Belair's track record when it comes to games coming out of Sweet Baby Inc. is pretty terrible overall, and that's being very kind. It's gotta make you wonder like, who is continuing to hire them and bring them on for consultation when everything they touch seems to be poisonous and destroy any potential of future success? So to be honest, I'm not totally shocked that the sales for this game are low, but I am surprised that it's zero, if this is true. That goes to show just how bad this game really is. Not just like it's a terrible game experience, but it doesn't even speak to a gamer that wants to go in and buy a new game experience. You'd think just by dumb luck there'd be one random Joe Schmo, some mom and pop going into a shop saying, hey, my kid likes games, uh, what's new this week? I'll buy this one because we got money to blow. That didn't happen anywhere. Like that's kind of hard to believe just by dumb luck. But at the same time, 
Maybe it's a sign of exactly what's happening in the times right now. Anyways, I'm going to leave it there. If you guys want more information, check out smashjt.com for the full article. Uh, again, shout out to this anonymous tipster that works at GameStop Corporate giving me this information. If it is to be believed, it is beyond wild. If you guys appreciate what I'm doing, hit that join button. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, you stay smashing. Like, hey, if, if you're a marginalizer, especially a black dev, we would love to give you a portfolio review. I didn't audition. I I was, I was offered the opportunity and I, I jumped at it. Smash, 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 Smash.